Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our woodsy welcome wreath. I have all my pieces cut out here in front of me. Now, before we get started, I just want to go over a few things. Um, first off, we'll start from the bottom, work our way up. We have these pieces here that have uh, B, the letter B. There's four of them. And then we have the letter T. There's four of those. It's a double layer little frame that we're going to create for the wreath. Don't need to do any inking or anything special to these. We're going to leave these as is. Okay. The next layer that's going to go on top of that is this brown layer that does have um, some actual leaves connected to it. And there's two options, two things that you can do with the leaves here. One, the layer here, let me point it out, and you'll see it among the leaves as well. You see how we've added little veins to the leaves. You can do one of two things. Actually, there's a third option as well. Uh, option number one is that you use your embossing tool or a debosser and change the layer to deboss all of these uh, veins. Okay, that's just going to give you a deboss look. And, you know, depending on the paper you select, it may be really visible and uh, it may do the trick. Option number two is to change that layer to draw. So you can put in a pen. I used a 0.4 millimeter fine tip pen. Um, let me show you kind of what it looked like or what it looks like. Um, Cricut makes them and there's also some third parties that make them. They look like this and they're very fine tip pens. Okay. And you can use those to draw in the veins. And of course you can experiment with any type of pen that you'd like to get the desired effect. In my case, I used a very fine tip pen. Okay, so you can either, again, A, deboss the veins and leave them as is. B, you can use a pen to draw in the veins. Uh, or C, what I did, and I took the long route, I debossed using my debosser, and then I drew in the veins manually. I tried to duplicate the layers and have it um, deboss and draw it doesn't line up properly. Maybe if you use a thicker pen, it might, uh, but we don't include the file that way. Okay. So again, you're either going to deboss it or you're going to draw in the veins. I think you should probably just draw in the veins as it was probably the most tedious thing. Uh, the inking is really not that bad as long as you got a good set of inks. Okay. So remember that we also note that in the download. Okay. So back to this, as I mentioned, this is the first layer. This is ba basically the little frame or, or the, the base for the wreath. The next layer that's going to go on is this one here. We're going to assemble all this. This um, you do, you are, you're going to either draw these in with your pen tool or you're going to deboss those. And then we have a similar layer that is all red and you don't need to do any debossing or inking on this. Okay. And you'll see why. And then finally, we have all of our beautiful leaves. These are all, these have all been inked and embossed. Now, depending on the colors that you decide to go with, um, you're going to want to probably grab whatever color of paper you're going to work with and test out your inks. Now, I may actually um, recommend that you cut out a sample of each leaf and test out the colors that you have on hand to see which, um, which color gives you the best look on each of the leaves. Okay. I probably went through about three or four different colors until I found the right one to work with each of the corresponding colors of cardstock um, so that the veins aren't too prominent. Okay. Um, and you can see here how well, the colors of the markers that I used blends with the inks that I used. I want them to, I wanted them to be somewhat similar. Okay. To get that desired look. Um, I tried, I tried a white jelly pen on the dark red. It just didn't work very well. Okay. And you can see here's the, the brown leaves. So, and it's okay if there's a little bit of variation, because if you look at autumn leaves, there's a ton of variation when it comes to the changing colors of the leaves. So not a big deal. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into the assembly here. 
Uh, what we're going to do is grab all four pieces that have the letter B, B as in boy, and you can see here that, well, if you have it like this, the B is backwards. So you want that there, and you're going to set up all the Bs so that they somewhat form a little circle. These two pieces here, there's two shorter ones, and there's two longer ones. These two longer ones have little score marks here. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start forming the actual wreath base. And what I, what I want you to do here is take this one, the one that's on the left, and just put a little bit of glue on there up to the score mark. Don't go past it. And then on this guy here, we'll flip this around, and you just want to put glue right out to the edge. Okay, spread that glue out all the way. Grab this piece, and you're just going to line that up with the score marks there on the B. This doesn't have to be perfect. Ultimately, this will all be hidden away. You're not going to see it. We're literally just creating the base for this thing. Okay, next, we're going to go over here to this one, the next larger strip that's on the right-hand side, and we'll apply our glue here right up to the score mark. Don't go past it. We'll flip this over and just apply a little bit of glue right up to the edge. Okay, and then we're going to get these two pieces joined right up to that little score mark. Put this one on top, just like that. Press that down. And then finally, we'll work our way down here. Put a little bit of glue right there. Don't go past the score mark. Grab the last little piece. We'll get a little bit of glue right up to the very edge, like so and pop that right into place, right up against that little score mark. There we go. So initially when we designed this wreath, it was a little bit smaller and we opted to go a little bit bigger, okay? So now this isn't perfectly matching up, but again, not a big deal. This is just the base and we've got one more layer that's gonna go on top of that to kind of make it a little bit thicker. So we'll go back here to the, uh, the underside of this side and just match that up right up to the little score mark. Try to make sure that it stays mostly flat. Okay, so there's the first layer. Now we're gonna grab this one here with the letter T. And again, the letter T is right side up here. We've got two little shorties. One's gonna go on the left, one's gonna go on the right. And we have this guy here, letter T. If I have it this way, it's upside down. So I'm gonna put that here. And then you'll also notice the top one has a little triangle cut into it, okay? And the process for this is exactly the same. I'm gonna take and apply our glue onto this little section just before the score mark. And we'll take this side here, flip it over, spread that glue out to the very edge, and just get that lined up nicely right up to the score mark, just like that. Press that down, make sure it's nice and even. There we go. Okay, then we'll go over to this side, just to the left of the little triangle that's cut in there. And pop some glue on there. Grab this strip, flip it over, a little bit of glue right up to the edge, like so. Spread that out and just line it up with the score mark. There we go. Make sure it's nice and even. Perfect. And then the bottom strip, again, glue to the right side of the little score marks. There's two of them there. And then just put a little bit right up to the edge. Line that up right up to the score mark. Press that down. There we go. Mine's a little bit off. That's okay. No one's really gonna see this part anyway. And then finally, to the left side of the little score marks here. And then just a little bit right out to the edge on the last little section, like so. And that should pop right into place. There we go. Not perfect, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up these two triangles here, 
I'm just gonna make this thing two layers thick. And there we go. Okay, so we've got a lot of surface area to cover here. Now, one other thing you could do technically if you wanted to um, is connect these two using some foam squares. You could do that if you want. I'm gonna go with the glue and I'm just gonna do little curly cues all the way around. Again, they don't need to be perfect because no one's really gonna see this. It's all gonna be covered up with tons of leaves. And we still wanna make sure that these two layers stick together nicely. Okay, and then again, just connect the two triangles together. And then just work your way around. Don't worry if it's not perfect. That's good enough. Just want a nice solid base for our wreath. All right, so next section here is gonna be our brown section. And this is gonna go together in a very similar fashion. So what we wanna do is just sort of arrange this and figure out what goes where, okay? And you can see here that we have some elm leaves and these are, these are the ones right here. Okay, so you can see how this is actually gonna go right on top, like so, okay, just like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue and we do have some little, we have some little score marks here. Okay, so we have some little score marks here and these are just to help you make sure you get the glue in the right spot. Go ahead and throw some glue right onto this surface here. Don't go past the score mark, okay? And then on this, you wanna just take and apply a little bit of glue right up onto the tip of each of these little elm leaves. Now one of them is actually the base of it, which is fine. Okay, we're gonna match this up like so. So you can see this one's gonna go right here. Match that up and that one's gonna go right there, just like that. Press that down. Okay. There we go. All right. Now we're going to move our way over here to the left hand side. And you can see here we've got this oak leaf. It's going to go right there, like that. Okay. We can put glue on this entire surface here, just below the score mark. right up to the score mark. And then of course we can put a little bit of glue right there just to keep it nice and tight. Okay, so just match that up as accurately as you can. There we go. Perfect, okay. Now once this is set, once all the glue is in place uh, and it's had some time to cure, we can definitely go in and do a little bit of training to these, the tips of the leaves there to give them a little bit of oomph, okay? All right, so now finally, we're gonna come over here and this layer is gonna go right here and you can see it's gonna go right up to that little score mark there. There's a little score mark right here, okay? And it's gonna go right on there like so, just like that. Okay, so you can go ahead and apply your glue onto this surface here and just don't go past those little score marks. Right up to the edge. Just thin that out a little bit, grab this side and pop that right. Right up to the little score mark, whoops. And I accidentally put some glue in a spot that didn't need it. I'm going to rub that off. That will probably, more than likely, it will be hidden. That was my bad. And then you can see here that this other side just naturally sort of falls into place. And what we can do is we'll put glue on everything to the left of the score mark. Just keep it there. 
and you can see how that and then what we'll do is we'll just throw a little bit of glue onto the back side of the leaf that kind of crawls over it and just match that up and then match up the little uh, maple leaf there. Okay, and we have our first layer, which is great. And now what we can do, you can see here that this is gonna go right on top of that little triangle up at the top. And this is gonna get glued down onto this surface. So I think it's best to simply just apply glue onto this surface here. And just need it to stay in place. It's okay if the edges aren't completely down flat. No one's, you're not gonna see that. There's gonna be so many different layers of leaves that it's really not gonna make a difference. I'm gonna hold this up and just get that, get those triangles matched up. And then push the rest of this down into place. All right, so I've got most of it pretty flat. There's one little section that I just didn't get enough glue on, or I got to it kind of late and the glue didn't, glue was kind of dried up. So I'll just take a scrap piece of paper and just paint a little extra glue <clears throat> in any little areas that may need it. Okay, I see a little area there that might need it as well. So take your time, be thorough. Um, ultimately, a lot of this will not really matter because we have so many layers of leaves that are going to be going on top of these, on top of this whole section. The whole idea is to cover this, this little circle, so that you don't see it. So essentially, at the end of the day, like I said, I don't think it's really going to matter much, um, but I am, I like to make sure that do everything as accurately as possible. Okay, now while we're here and while things are still kind of flat, now we'll be pushing things down and making them, probably flattening things out as we go, but I just wanna show you, you can take and when you place the leaf between your finger and the dowel, you can lift it up about 45 degrees and just run the dowel through to give it a little bit of dimension. Now you can also curl it the other way too. Now instead of training it like I did, if you just grab it and place it between your dowel, you can curl it like you're curling your hair. Um, the elm leaves, especially the thicker ones, those might be, might be best left alone. You may inadvertently crease them, which can be a little unsightly. I think with these guys here, you can definitely give these a little bit of a curl. The thicker the, uh, the thicker the dowel, the less likely you are to crease it, like leave an actual super visible crease. I'm gonna try to avoid that. Um, but you get the idea here. Probably, I'm, I'm almost certain that I will end up going through after everything's assembled and training everything multiple times to get the desired look. And I just noticed another little area that maybe didn't sit as flat as I would have hoped. So I'm gonna clean that up while I have the opportunity. Just one more little area here, okay. So next what we're gonna do, is gonna start working on the red round layer, round section, okay, and that is, again, that's the one where it's really not any inking or um, veining to do. We'll call it veining going forward. Okay, so that wreath can go off to the side for just a moment. Okay, and let's grab, let's grab this guy here. And this is pretty straightforward to put together. We just have to find the corresponding segments. Okay. And I think, let's see here. Let's, they should overlap. There we go. Okay, so you can see here, we have a, a, a silhouette of an oak leaf, and this one's just gonna go right here, like so. 
And looking at it, we can put glue on this entire section to the right of the score mark without having to worry about getting glue in a spot where we don't need it. So go ahead and do that. Okay, let's match that up with the layer underneath. Give that a little nudge. I actually broke out the brayer just to help me out a little bit. There we go. Okay, next, let's find the next section here. That's this section here. You can see there's a silhouette of a maple and then here's our little elm and that's gonna go right here. We can put glue on this entire section just to the bottom of the little score mark to get that connected. Just keep it south of the south of the score mark. Okay, we can also flip this one over and just do a nice thin line right along the edge. Spread that out. Just to make sure everything's nice and seamless. Okay, match that up. Not only can you match it up to the score mark, but you can match it up with the silhouette underneath. Okay, and as you can see here, when we do that, that score mark almost pretty much disappears. There we go. Okay. And finally, our last little piece here, we can put glue on pretty much this entire section to the left of the little score mark, score marks, I should say. So you can go all the way up there, bring it over here, and so on and so forth. We'll lift this section up and just match that up nice and accurate. Okay, and that just leaves this section here. And you can see we've got a little score mark right here. We just wanna keep the glue to the right side of that score mark, but you can apply it all over the section here. Just keep it to the right. Okay. And line that up as accurately as you can, just like that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do next. You'll notice that right at the top of this section is your little triangle, okay? And this, if you were to just pretend to remove all of the leaves on this, you'll notice that there's a thin little circle that goes all the way around. And the outside edge of this is going to meet up with the outside edge on the brown part. Okay, so when we put this down, I think the best thing to do here would be to probably glue this, um, maybe just the top half first, and then let the bottom half kind of sit. We can flip it back and just make sure that we get the top part aligned correctly, okay? So grab from where the triangle is here. You can just kind of pretend like this is where we're gonna stop, right about halfway and only put glue on this virtual little ring in the center. Okay, you can pretty much visualize it. We'll stop about there. And we'll stop about there. Okay, just very carefully. We don't have any glue on the bottom of this, just on the top. Get that triangle lined up and then look at and focus on the top edge. And I am a little off. There we go. And there we go. Just have to be a little careful. And then just adjust that ever so slightly to make sure that you've got it hugging that perimeter that we talked about. And just wanna make sure that we are, have some of it, at least a quarter of it anchored, okay? 
Just make sure we have at least a quarter of it anchored. And then we'll go and what we can do, give that a few seconds to set because we didn't put glue on this bottom part. We can lift this up very gently and continue. Let me clean this off real quick. We can continue applying glue around this little ring. And since it's already in place, we won't even have to mess with making sure that we have it aligned. So just literally flip it over and push it down. Okay, so just be careful there, take your time. Okay, so we're gonna begin putting the dark red leaves down onto this dark red layer. Now, the first two leaves that we wanna put down though, if you look at the stems, you'll see that there's a little Roman numeral one and a little Roman numeral two etched into the base of the stem, okay? Now, I wouldn't do any, any training on any of these just yet, because we do wanna make sure that we um, well, if we're going to train them, we want to train them together in the same fashion, roughly. Okay, so for example here, I think that with this layer here, what we want to do, if we do want to add some dimension to this, is we're going to take this little leaf, we're going to train that out, and we can train that out, which means that we want to do roughly the same thing to these two layers, and then glue them together. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin applying our glue to Mr. Leaf here, a beautiful maple leaf. Our Canadian friends are gonna love this. Okay, and the reason that we're putting one and two down first is because they contain um, some additional score marks that we're gonna use to help us with the positioning of, this thing's kind of big, I might need to stand up actually. So just do your best to match that up with the sub layer there. And if you get a little bit of, I guess you can call it ghosting or like a shadow, I wouldn't worry too much about it because it's the same color. There we go. And I'm gonna love watching this kind of come together. It's gonna be very exciting. And I see the difference between just the plain paper and something inked with the veins, okay? That is where the fun comes in. All right, so this guy, I'm gonna train him out a little bit, which means I'm gonna do the same thing with him. And we'll flip him over. And apply our glue all the way down. So remember, this is the one that has the little number two etched into it. And he just has some additional little markers to help with a future step. Line that up as accurately as you can. There we go. Building a beautiful, beautiful wreath. So what I'm gonna suggest is that you just kind of go around the horn and find each of the little leaves. Now we, we didn't wanna put a ton of markers all over everything because if you kind of mess up a little bit, you don't want a bunch of markers just sitting out and kind of blemishing the whole project. And this, this process is really not that difficult. It'll only, t I mean, you're gonna have to figure out where it goes anyway when you go to place it. But I wanna put these, I wanna put these layers down right now so that we can kind of decide, well, are we gonna, are we gonna put this one above or below its neighbor or, you know what I mean? I'm gonna figure out just the overall placement. There's not that many, so it won't take that long. That one's gonna go there. This little guy is gonna go here. We got a big one that's gonna go, where are you at, mister? He's gonna go here. Nope. Where are you, buddy? You're right, you gotta be right here. I probably just had just set uh, up. Yep. That's right. Okay, so he does go there. I just had him angled incorrectly and that's okay. You're gonna go here, I believe. Yep. Okay, you got a big guy here. You're gonna go here. So you can see what's happening now. Um, this will definitely help us make sure that we get 
the layering correct. And this guy's gonna go here. I think you're gonna go here. Because some of these have stems, some of them don't. Okay, so as I was saying, we're kind of uh, putting a little puzzle together here, but without technically putting it together, just wanna find the corresponding spots where each of these little pieces are gonna go. And what we're gonna do first, there's, there's pieces here that have stems. We're gonna actually glue those down first, okay? So anything with a stem is gonna go down first by default. Okay, so let's see, we've got stems here. This one we can move out of the way. This one's already glued down. These we can move out of the way. <coughs> these we can move, these we can move out of the way. And we're just gonna start, let me just start at the bottom here. And I'm gonna grab this little maple leaf here. And of course, we are gonna want to train this. I'm gonna train this up. I'm gonna try not to move it too much. I wanna rattle everything around. Curl those up, which means that we gotta curl these up a little bit. And can make any little finishing touches as far as training. After everything's in place, I do like to, especially when I'm gluing two layers together that are gonna be trained, it is helpful to sort of pre-train them so that they already sort of assume that position somewhat. Okay, so this one's gonna go here. And just match those up as accurately as you can. You can see that little, there's a little spot for the stem there. This part here, that's gonna lay flat anyway. So we don't need to worry about training that, but this part, that can be trained, but we'll let that set first. Okay, and we'll kind of rotate this a little bit and move on over here to this oak leaf. And I'm gonna take, and this is already two layers thick, and that's okay. I'm gonna train that out a little bit, which means that we gotta train these out a little bit. Okay, and that's gonna go right here, like so. And I'm gonna get that glue all the way out to the bottom of the stem. And just take your time with this. This is, this is the most important part right now is making sure that we get everything glued down in the correct spot and as precisely as we possibly can so that when it is time to put our little final finishing touches on everything as far as training and shaping, that it all goes smoothly because we've got everything matched up accurately. Um, I wanna try to avoid a phenomenon called ghosting where we have the back layer showing through like behind the layer on top. It's not the end of the world if it does show through. It's not gonna, it's, I don't think it's gonna make or break the project, but you can see here, um, we have to decide here, we wanna put this one down first or this one, it doesn't really matter, okay? You can see the stem is there, not a big deal. I'm gonna curl this up a little bit. You know, rather than put little markers on everything, you just have little uh, reminders in the form of natural things, in this case, little stems, to help us get the order right. Okay, there we go. So that one's good. Now we can move over, you know, let's put this down next, this little oak leaf, and I wanna curl this in a little bit. Okay, and actually, you know what? I'm gonna curl that back. So we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna curl this in, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm gonna curl that back. And we can apply our glue. Just get those stems, the stemmed leaves on first. Nice and easy with the glue here. Don't overdo it. We don't want glue shooting out all over the place. There we go. And just match that up nicely. 
And as your kind of connect member, we took this one and folded it back a little bit. Go ahead and give that a little push back as you're pressing down to connect the two layers. Just go ahead and push that back a little bit so that when the two layers dry together like that, it's gonna stick and it's gonna stay in that position pretty much for eternity, which is a cool thing about when you're training things and you've got multiple layers, um, works out real nice. Okay, so this one I think goes here, yep. So we need to get this guy in place. Okay, so he's gonna go here and I'm gonna train him up. I'm gonna train him up as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And it's gonna be flat over there and you can see how that's gonna go on just like that. And this one again has a little stem on it. Once we get this red layer in, um, we're more than halfway home. So it's gonna start really coming together. I can't wait to see what this looks like after I put my little touches on it as far as the inking and <clears throat> I'm very excited to see all the people that made the bungalow. The fact that you spent all that time meticulously inking everything and embossing everything, that just means that you really, really love what you do. And that has kind of inspired me to try a few more challenging things here and there. Uh, this, this project is not difficult at all, but you know, if you really want to make it shine, <clears throat> you're, you're really going to, want to sp you're going to want to spend some time doing all the inking. It's really, really beneficial. <clears throat> okay, so we've got this, this uh, elm leaf here, and I'm going to take and going to train just the tip of this back a little bit. So I have to do the same thing there. And we'll apply our glue. I'm not overly concerned about getting it out to the little, little scallopy areas there, the very ends. I don't think it's all that necessary. Okay, let me bring this a little bit closer to my head here. Line that up. I didn't get that. Could you try again? No, I wasn't talking to you. Okay. Soon. Thanks for understanding. There we go, beautiful. Okay, so, I mean, since we're here, this little guy is gonna go down next, right here. Okay, he's got a stem, so we wanna make sure we put him in. And can't really curve that, but we can bring this up. So let's do that. And we can bring this up, so let's do that. Which means we wanna do the same thing here and here. Okay, so that's gonna go just like that. Beautiful. Flip that around. I was saying uh, during one of my videos uh, from this bundle, just got back. I go up to the North Woods of Wisconsin every year, up to Eagle River, and uh, go up there for the colors. And I was just really disappointed this year because I think they just had a really dry summer, and uh, the colors just were kind of dull. And I'm sure there were different different areas up there, especially I'm sure the UP being around Lake Superior. Uh, I'm sure that it was beautiful as usual, but we already drive up five hours just to go to Wisconsin. And, and um, maybe I just need to go a little bit further in the future, we'll see. Okay, so getting that one down, that looks good. Got a little bit of glue on there, that's okay. And this guy, gotta make sure I hold it so that it sticks. It's gonna be a very solid wreath too. Okay, there we go. So that's good. Now that we've got all those down with the um, with the stems, you can go in now and we can put this one in place. We don't need to do all the stems right now. What I meant was just do them in each of these little quadrants. I'm gonna bring these up a little bit. Okay, so literally just placing the leaf between my finger and the dowel, lifting it up about 45 to 90 degrees, and then just running the dowel through. <clears throat> okay, let's get the glue on this guy and get him into place. Oops, I have, my hands have really taken a beating last month with all these projects and all the inking. And the, I think for 
I don't know if you guys uh, did this as well, but uh, I used, I think I almost used a whole bottle of glue on the Bewitched Bungalow. I don't know if you guys can attest to that. I know I did. Okay, let's get that lined up first. Give that a few squeezes. It's gonna be flat here, but along the outside, <clears throat> can continue to kind of curl the, the two layers that we're connecting up to give it a little bit of dimension like that. Okay, so we are pretty much solid up through here. And that guy's already in place. So this guy's gonna go here. That gives us a little bit of room to create some separation there and there. Careful when you're doing that not to rip anything. I've had that happen to me many a times where I'm training something and I use my superhuman strength and I accidentally rip it in half or tear it. So just be careful. It is a possibility. I'm sure many of you have experienced that. Okay. And match that up there. There we go. We've got this little guy here. Just press that in place. Beautiful. That's going to go flat right there. This one's going to go up. There we go. Okay. Really coming together here. <coughs> okay. So moving along here, we've got this large, let me see here. You know, we can put this guy down next. And we've got two layers here. So I'm going to take and just very gently curl that up. And it's really the only area there, this little leaf here, part of the leaf. It's the only one we can really accentuate with some, uh, some training. So let's do that anywhere we can. Give this thing a nice full dimensional natural look. We don't want it to be all flat. Well, maybe, you know, maybe it being flat is the natural look. I don't know. I guess maybe it, I'm trying to just make it as full as possible. Let me bring this closer to my head here. Get that matched up. There we go. Slide that a little bit. There we go. Cool. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Moving along here. We've got this large guy and we placed him here earlier and this one's kind of free floating you can give that a little bit of a curve and you know what, maybe let's go back on this one it's up to you how you want to train this okay so i've got this one coming forward this one's going back so i flip it over to change the direction okay there we go and let's get our glue going. So I'm curious if you guys, you guys have any autumn traditions or any of your favorite places that you go and see the colors. Cause I know, I mean, my, my audience is very diverse as far as geography goes, I would, if you're going to leave a comment, I mean, you, if you're if you're overseas in a different country, I'd still love to hear about it. Uh, but obviously, with everything going on in my life right now, chances are it won't be leaving the country anytime soon. So, you know, Michigan, Wisconsin, even the New England area. Um, if you have any places that I should put on what I guess you can call a bucket list or whatever, I'd love to hear about it because I'm always looking for beautiful places to go see the colors and um, you know it might be time to maybe take a trip somewhere else instead of to Wisconsin uh, for the fall colors just to change it up a little bit you know uh, as they say variety is the spice of life and I think that might not be a bad idea all right so we're going up here now I gotta find the correct uh, oak leaf where the heck did he go he, he done gone, disappeared. 
Either that or I am just picking the wrong one. Probably just picking the wrong one. There it is. Okay, so that one's gonna go there. And then we have a smaller one. And I think I'm gonna do the smaller one on top. It could go either way. Okay, so it's up to you to decide here. Ultimately, this, this will be covered up with another leaf. So it's not gonna make or break anything. But it's a little decision that you can make at this point. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I, I remember driving through, um, uh, what's that place called? Stockbridge. During uh, October, on my way to see Martha Stewart in New York City, Manhattan, <clears throat> drove through Stockbridge, um, the Berkshires, and that was. Uh, I think we we must have missed must have missed the peak for that because uh, the colors weren't all that great. And I know from experience that there's a small window where you catch the peak. I was lucky enough one year when I was up in Wisconsin to literally arrive the day that it hit peak and then the day I departed, you could tell that they just were starting to dull. And that was a blessing. It was literally like walking through, uh, I don't know, like just some psychedelic experience. So I'll never forget it. Okay, all right, so we are making some progress here. Uh, let's see, we've got a few more over here in this quadrant here that have, um, that have some stems, like this one here. And this one has got a little bit of give. So let's, let's train that up a little bit and get this one in place. I think there's one more elm leaf that has a stem, so we'll pop that down and then we've got a few more of the dark red to put in place. And then we're gonna start adding some color. Start adding some color. This is essentially our, the background, the base on our canvas, I guess you could say. There we go, beautiful. And again, as you're pressing these two together, give that a little extra curve. You can even take this tip and point it the other way a little bit. Yeah, I didn't like that. I'm gonna put it back. Okay, and then this guy's gonna go right here. And again, this one's pretty free flowing. And I'm just gonna hit that with my dowel, curl it up a little bit. We'll do the same on the leaf. And we'll get that in place. I'm hoping that, I'm gonna put this one in my bathroom, I think. I, I have a, beautiful watercolor drawing, an original actually, that I found in an antique store. Had it framed, it was sitting in my closet for like 10 years, finally had it framed because I realized it was worth something. I mean, it was always worth something to me because I bought it because I liked it, but had it framed and there's a nice space right above it where I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm gonna just put this wreath up there, we'll see. All right, so this guy, this, this little oak leaf here, very free flowing. I can really have my way with it. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the actual leaf in the same direction. Okay, doesn't have to be completely trained exactly the same way, it's just as long as it's generally going in the right direction, the same direction. As we're pressing these layers down together, we can really give it that final little bend or curve and it will hold that position forever. There's a really cool thing that I saw. I actually bought, I really like buying art, uh, especially from other people. Um, when I was up in Wisconsin one year, I went to an art gallery and some guy figured out how to take leaves, fall leaves, eh, maybe they weren't even fall leaves, I don't know. Um, he took leaves and he 
figured out how to get rid of the meat of the leaf and just keep the veins, like all the little tiny little veins, all the little the smallest little details. So I figured out how to, how to kind of melt away the meat. And then I think he might have airbrushed it or something with like beautiful fall colors. And it was just uh, framed it beautifully. And I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. I looked up the process and it looked like something that <laughs> probably never have time to really mess with, but it's okay. Anyways, when I was at Eagle River this year, um, they had the Cranberry Fest up there and I ended up getting a few, a few pieces uh, from an artist that I've seen up there year after year after year. I just never really, I don't know. You gotta support the artists. It's uh, not easy making a living as an artist, I'm sure. We're very fortunate because we have such a, a vast audience that's basically worldwide and it's all online. And I don't I just sell files and instructions. So, uh, you know, where these guys, some of these guys are you know, they have to buy canvases and they have to make prints and framing and all this stuff. I uh, really give it to them. They are, they don't have, we have it very relatively easy. I'm not saying that what we do is easy by any means. Okay. Almost there. All right. So I've got one more of the dark red to put down. And curl that up. Do the same thing on this one. And then we'll start adding our next layer of colors. And yeah, just uh, definitely about halfway home here. Not difficult at all. Okay, and the last little guy from the dark red family. There we go, and then again, just try to try to make sure that you get this top layer right on top of that underside, and then go ahead and give it a little curl, train it towards you, whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> The next colors that we're gonna put down are the orangey. There's like a yellow and an orange. So the lighter color we'll do later. And then the light red, okay? Now these are gonna go down using a series of little markers that you, you'll see throughout the inner part of the wreath. That little score mark right there and that one there is gonna match up with the tip of this. And that other one that looks like a little U is gonna go on the inside of this little area here where the two leaves meet. Okay, so it's gonna go in this direction here. And again, these are all gonna be free flowing, so we can train them however we want. You can kinda of curl them forward, curl them back, whatever you wanna do, just give it a little bit of life. And because it's going like this, obviously we don't need to glue the whole thing down. So I would focus most of the glue onto the bottom part of the leaf here, and mostly just on one side. Whatever side after you do your training is actually making contact with the main part of the wreath. Okay, so there you go. That's gonna go just like that. And now, we can move our way down. Um, we're gonna do both of these at the same time, just kind of work our way clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever we see fit. Okay, so we're gonna grab this, we're gonna grab this uh, maple leaf, okay? Just give it a little train there and there. And what we wanna do here is this part of the leaf right here, okay, not the two at the bottom, but this one right here, you're gonna just kinda put that over the top of the previous uh, yellow one, okay? And you'll notice that there's two little score marks in between these two leaves here. That's gonna match up with the little inside, the valley here, and then the little valley here, 
Okay, it's gonna go right there. We want it kind of like that, which means that we just need to put a little bit of glue right at the base of this thing. Okay, just about there. And that's gonna go right there. Just like that. And just press that down. <clears throat> okay, we can move on down here now. We're gonna grab one of the larger orangey maple leaves. They're both the same size, so you can pick whichever one you want. And then just below this leaf here, there's almost like a, almost looks like a, like the little Harry Potter thing that he has on his forehead. Uh, like a little backward, or like an S kind of, okay? That S is gonna match up with this little shape right here. So if you put it right there, you'll see that it matches up perfectly, okay? So it's going in this direction, and I want it, want it to stick right there, which means that obviously we can take and can train this out, all three of these, and maybe even take and, let's curl this one to the side a little bit. Maybe curl that one to the side. Whatever you want to do, just get, get funky with it, however you want to do it. And then again, before you put it down, just make sure that you've got it in the right spot. Okay, and we're going to glue it down right there so we can take and just apply a little bit of glue here. Um, hot glue wouldn't be a bad idea either at this point. You could definitely, if you want, go with some hot glue. That's fine. And that's going to go right there. It'll just make quicker work of this if you use hot glue. Okay, but let's take a look and see what we have forming here, and I am loving it. Okay, next we're gonna find the smallest of the orange maple leaves. Okay, and you wanna find, you wanna find these two oak leaves here. Okay, and this guy is gonna be facing this way, and we just need to find the little score marks here. You'll see there's a series right here that are going to basically hug the very bottom of the leaf right there, just like that. Okay, so again, this one here, we can really train this one. Give it a little, little bit of life. And we're just gonna put glue right at the very base of this guy here and find those little markers. There's literally like six of them there for each of the little points on the bottom, just like that, okay? Next, we're gonna move over here and we have to find the small, not the smallest, there's three uh, elms. We want the smallest, uh, not the smallest one, the medium one, okay? And that little guy, you can see there's little score marks throughout here, and th this set right here is for the very base of it. So it's gonna go just like that. Okay, so this one we can kind of just gonna kind of curl it up a little bit right about there. And we're just gonna put glue right at the base and match it up with the little score marks there. And press that down into place. There we go. And we're gonna head on over to this area here where we're gonna find the largest uh, maple leaf in the, uh, that would be the orange color, okay. And this one right here, the little marker that's just directly to the right of the leaf we, we just put down is gonna be right here. Okay, so we're not actually going to, well, you know what, this one we can glue down, this part up here and here can bring up. Okay, but we'll keep this one flat because we're gonna have some more leaves going on top of that. So we do wanna anchor it at that point. Well, let me see it real quick here, hold on. Might change my mind here. There we go. Just make sure you have it in the right spot. Um, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna anchor it here, and we can go all the way down to almost the almost the base of it, just about there. Okay. Just match that up as accurately as you can. There we go. Pop that into place. Wonderful. And this little oak leaf is going to slightly go on top of this one here. And you'll notice that there's a little score mark here. That little score mark is gonna go right into this little valley, this first little main valley here. So you match that up there, okay? And then it's gonna go right up here like that, which means that we can take and, go ahead and 
ahead and train this however which way you want. Up and down, left and right. Okay, so just find that spot. And then you'll also see that there's a score mark here and here to help you with the placement. I'm going to just glue it down right at the base. And if we need to later on, once we start adding the other layers, if we need to glue it down a little more towards the middle of the leaf, we can definitely do that at a later time. And that's fine. Okay, so that's that. And now we're gonna head over here to where we have this maple and this is the one and two. Remember we had the little, little leaves there with the one and two written on it. We're gonna grab the last remaining oak leaf of the orange color. And you'll notice that there's a series of little markers here on this leaf. And that's gonna go just like this. Just like that, okay? This little marker right here is gonna go right into this little valley, the first little valley. And then there's one more there that kind of contours the very base of it. So it's gonna go just like that. And with this oak leaf, these oak leaves, they, all these little separate sections, you can kind of train them this way and that. Just do whatever you can to kind of bring it to life, okay? And we're gonna put glue just on the base Okay, and again, find that spot. Just like that. Pop that into place, there we go. So now we're gonna move over here and we're gonna grab the last of the orange elms. Okay, and that little guy, you can see that there's a series of little score marks here. Just like that, it's gonna go right there. And I just kind of curled it up and I'm just gonna put glue right on the very base of it. And the first little set of score marks right there for the very bottom of it. You can see how it kind of snugs that. And that's gonna go right there, okay. Okay, we're gonna grab the largest of the light red elms, give that a little bit of a curve. We'll throw a little bit of glue just at the very base of it. And right in between, well, just below this yellow one or the orange one, right about here, there's a set of little score marks for this little guy and he's going right there like that, right in that direction. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're gonna start with the light yellow pieces now. I want you to find the two largest maple leaves, okay? And what we're gonna do is one of them is gonna go, and again, this is these are gonna be free floating here, okay? I'm gonna put one right about here. I'm not gonna glue them down just yet because I wanna make sure that we love how they're set up. Okay, we're gonna find a, we're gonna find a small oak leaf and we're gonna put that right about here. Uh, could probably go that way, okay. And then one more large maple that is gonna go in this area here. I'm gonna to try to cover up a little bit of this brown here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up like that. That I'm gonna put right about here and I'll probably tuck it underneath this beautiful orange leaf because I want I love that contrast there. So we'll just take and just get a little bit of glue right on the bottom of this guy. Tuck them underneath there, kind of in that direction, there we go. That's nice. Okay, this little guy I'm gonna curl up and just kind of play with the other little parts of it. And I think I found a really nice place for him. I'm gonna hide the base of this right behind the previous leaf. And I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bring it down more. Bring it to about right there. I think that looks really nice right there, okay. So I have, um, my, I have a camera above me, so I get to kind of look at, look at things from a different vantage point too. And I love how we have the red, the orange, the light yellow, and then the brown all in that one little area. And I thought that was really cool right in that section there. Let's move, let's move over here. 
Again, this is really gonna be personal preference here for the most part. I've got two of these elms. I got one large one, okay? And this large one here, you see this, this uh, maple leaf here. I'm gonna tuck that underneath and it's gonna go right roughly like that, okay? And I'm gonna curl this one kind of sideways a little bit and maybe even bring it down. I don't wanna crease it too much. But he's going to go, I'm going to tuck him in there and just kind of play around with the direction. I kind of like it like that. Okay, so I'll try to remember that. Throw a little bit of glue right there. Tuck that underneath. And I think that looks nice. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the largest of the maple leaves in brown. Okay, and I'm just gonna play with curling it a little bit here and there, like so. And again, I love that. I love that brown. Okay, I'm gonna kind of maybe keep them, let's see how this looks here. That looks really nice right about there. So I'm just going to put that, and let's see how it looks with this one above it. No, I want a little bit more brown there, I think. Yep. Nothing wrong with the brown. The brown actually, you know, if you place it correctly, will help kind of create more contrast throughout the entire wreath. So definitely don't be afraid to place that somewhere strategically. And that is looking awesome so far. Largest of the left uh, oak leaves that are left here. And I might just pop one in right about here maybe. Yep, that looks good. Right about there. I'll throw some glue underneath. And we'll tuck that right in there. I don't want it overlapping on top of the other one. You know, I forgot to do is kind of train this one. That's okay. You can hold it in place and just kind of curl it around your dowel. I'm gonna curl that down a little bit. Bring this one up. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna grab the last of the yellow elms and then grab one of the, there's only two brown oaks left. Grab one of them. And I think this is a good place to put a little bit of brown and some of that yellow in. And let me see if it looks better this way. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna tuck this one in like that. Let's train this one up a little bit. And maybe train some of these down. Okay, so that we're gonna pop right in between here. I want that brown to be on top of that orange. So let's get that in place. Let's figure out the best place for that. That's gonna go right about there. And that just leaves this little elm that we're gonna pop right under here, kind of in that direction. I think that looks nice. Okay, I'm gonna grab the last of the brown elms and we got an area here that doesn't really have a lot of brown so I'm going to tuck that right underneath that beautiful maple right there and just kind of try to keep it somewhat flowing you know what I mean as far as the circle so you don't want it poking out too much to disrupt that natural flow you can bring it out a little bit but I think that looks gorgeous there okay and I think we might need a little bit of brown here. This might be a good place for that. Now, let's see here. We've got one more. Let's see. I'm just gonna take the rest of these and just kind of put them where I think we need certain colors just to see how it all flows. Oh, I have another yellow one here. Maybe I'll put this small one here. Uh, yeah, that looks good there. Put the small one here. This is where you kind of get to decide what you want to do. We set you up with the majority of it. And then this is where you get to put your own personal touch on it. That way, not every single one is going to look exactly the same, which is cool. 
I think that's really cool. We'll put that one there. Cool. Okay, and let's see. So as I'm looking at this now, I'm, I'm just seeing some spots that I feel like need a little bit more oomph as far as fullness, and that's fine. As I mentioned earlier on, I'm gonna go through and really finesse a lot of these parts to make them super full uh, wherever I think I need it. I like this piece right about here. It could go down, it could go up. I think it looks cool that way. So I'm gonna flare that up. This, this part I'm actually like really having fun right now because I can kind of step back, take a look at how I'm positioning my leaves. Um, even before I did paper crafts, this was kind of something I really enjoyed doing was just doing little floral uh, arrangements, even like, you know, fall wreaths. It's probably one of the first crafts I ever did actually was a fall wreath and I loved every minute of it. So now, especially with paper, I think it's fantastic. Okay, so that's gonna go there. I dig that. And I think we can maybe try to look to see where we need a little more fullness. Okay, so I had this guy here and I agree that he looks fantastic there. I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue right at the base of this, just kind of fill in that little spot where there's not much going on, where we can kind of see that little base. And then another cool thing that you can decide, uh, and now I'm trying to remember where I was, I, I kind of like it like this. Uh, this is gonna be the bottom, this is gonna be the top. That's why I didn't put this on yet, as far as the, the hanger. We can put that on whenever we want towards the end, okay? And that's all gonna determine um, what this is gonna look like, you know, once all said and done. I just need to figure out where we're gonna put these last two little pieces. Okay, I'm kind of thinking that maybe we could use a splash of color. Maybe up here. No, that's too much there. That's too much there. Maybe this little area here could use a little bit of yellow. Let's see, what do we think about that? I like that right there, maybe. That's not so bad. Let's give it a shot. And you know what you can also do too, if you're doing this and you're not totally sure with these last few, take and just use a 3D Zot. Put a 3D Zot on it. Just barely pop it on there and then just Push this down wherever you think you want it. I would hang it on the wall and then take a look. See if you love it. If you don't, you can always go in, just kind of pull it very gently and it'll come right off. And then that way you can readjust it and put it wherever you want. I might do a little bit of yellow there. That looks nice. Okay. Make these go back. Let's see, how did I have that? Let's see how full that looks. I dig it. I think I'm gonna go with it. Uh, just in case, these last few pieces are, in case I change my mind, I'm going to, and this is, I've mentioned this when we do floral arrangements. Um, as you're doing the arranging, arrange it. And if you want, walk away for a little bit, come back to it with a fresh set of eyes and see what you think. Sometimes a fresh set of eyes is the best thing you could do. Okay, I'm gonna tuck this one in. Let's see where we need a little splash of color. That looks nice right there, bam. Okay, don't forget where that was. I am so thrilled with this. I was a little worried that it wouldn't turn out, but it turned out fantastic. And there we go. Let's take a look at it. Oh yeah, that is awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at this little piece here. You'll notice that we have a little score mark here. 
Okay, and then we have these two. What we're gonna do is just glue these right on top of each other to thicken it up. This is what we're gonna use to hang this piece up on our wall. So just take one, pop it right on top of the other, make it two layers thick, and then we will take that and glue it to this little piece with the tab and make it three layers thick. Okay. And then you can flip this thing over. And again, depending on, depending on what you want to be your top or bottom, I want mine to kind of hang like this with this part as the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just glue this right to the back here like that. And then you've got yourself a little hanger. So. so that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to just walk away for a minute, come back and take a second look at it. I know for a fact that I'm gonna go through and now that everything's together, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start curling some more leaves, maybe bringing some back, bringing some forward, just creating some more depth, some, uh, some more for the light to play with as far as you know highlights and, and shadows go, just to make it more interesting. Um, but beyond that, you've got the, the few little leaves that if you are 100% sure that's where you want them, then you can take off the little foam dot and then just apply your glue. That way it's more permanent and that's going to do it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please visit us on our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button while you're there. Hit the little bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook, do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and over 46,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So thanks again for hanging out with me. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos and please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where you'll find over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly tutorials. I'll see you in the craft room.